Finding Order in Diversity Scientists have been trying to identify, name, and find order in diversity of life for a long time. The first scientific system for naming and grouping organisms was set up long before Darwin. In recent decades, biologists have been completing a changeover from the older system of names and classifications to a new system based on evolutionary theory. But the theory is constantly changing as much data are collected, so it is not a simple task. In binomial nomenclature, each species is assigned a two-part scientific name. The goal of systematics is to organize living things into groups that have biological meaning. The first step in understanding and studying diversity is to describe and name each species. By using a scientific name, biologists can be sure that they are discussing the same organism. Common names can be confusing because they vary among languages and from place to place. For example, the name cougar, puma, panther, and mountain lion can all be used to indicate the same animal, Phalus concolor. In the 18th century, European scientists agreed to assign Latin or Greek names to each species. Early scientific names often used long phrases to describe species in detail. For example, the English translation of the scientific name of a tree might be oak with deeply divided leaves that have no hairs on the underside and no teeth around their edges. It was also difficult to standardize names because different scientists focus on different characteristics. In the 1730s, Swedish botanist Carlos Linnaeus developed a two-word naming system called binomial nomenclature. The scientific name usually is Latin. It is written in italics. The first word begins with a capital letter and the second word is lowercase. The polar bear, for example, is called Ursus maritimus. The first part of the name Ursus is the genus to which the organism belongs. A genus is a group of similar species. The genus Ursus contains five other species bears, including Ursus arctos, the brown bear, or grizzly bear. The second part of the scientific name, Maritimus, for polar bears, is unique to each species and is often a description of the organism's habitat or an important trait. The Latin word Maritimus refers to the sea. Polar bears often live on pack ice that floats in the sea. The scientific name for the red maple is Acer rubrum. The genus Acer consists of all maple trees. The species rubrum describes the red maple's color. In addition to naming organisms, biologists try to organize or classify living and, and fossil species into larger groups that have biological meaning. Biologists often refer to these groups as taxa, singular taxon. The organization by group is called classification or taxonomy. The science of naming and grouping organisms is called systematics. How did Linnaeus group species into larger taxa? Linnaeus identified just four levels in his original classification system, but over time, Linnaeus's original classification system would expand to include seven hierarchical taxa. Species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, and kingdom. And now more recently, domain has been added since 1990. Above kingdom. Linnaeus also developed a classification system that organized species into a hierarchy or ranking. In deciding how to place organisms into larger groups, Linnaeus grouped species according to their anatomical similarities and differences. The scientific name for a camel with two humps is Camelus bactrianus. This illustration shows how a Bactrian camel, Camelus bactrianus, is grouped within each Linnaeal category. The genus Camelus contains another species, Camelus dromedarius, the dromedary with only one hump. The South American llama bears some resemblance to Bactrian camels and dromedaries, 
but the llama is more similar to other South American species than it is to European and Asian camels. Therefore, llamas are placed in a different genus, llama. Their species name is llama glama. Genera that share many similarities are grouped into larger categories, the family. In this case, camelidae. Similar families are grouped into the next larger rank and order. Camels and llamas family camelidae are grouped with several other animal families, including deer family cervidae and cattle family bovidae into their order artiodactyla, which are hoofed animals with an even number of toes. Similar orders are grouped into the next larger ranks, a class. The order of artiodactyla is placed in the class of mammalia, which include all animals that are warm-blooded, have body hair, and produce milk for their young. Similar classes are grouped into a phylum, a phylum includes organisms that are different, but that share important characteristics. The class Mammalia is grouped with birds, class Avis, reptiles, class Reptilia, amphibians, class Amphibia, and all classes of fish into the phylum Chordata. These organisms share important body plan features. Among them are a nerve cord along the back, a spinal cord. The largest and most inclusive of Linnaeus's taxonomic categories is the kingdom. All multicellular animals are placed in the kingdom of Animalia. In the most significant way, members of species determine which organisms belong to that species by mating with them and producing fertile offspring. Ranks above the level of species, however, are determined by researchers who determine how to define and describe genera, families, orders, classes, phyla, kingdoms, and now also domains. Linnaeus grouped organisms into large taxa according to the overall similarities and differences. But which similarities and differences are the most important? And when they conflict, would a branching tree suffice to show a complete picture? For example, adult barnacles and limpets live attached to rocks and have similar looking shells. Adult crabs don't look anything like barnacles and limpets. Based on these features, one would likely classify limpets and barnacles together and crabs in a different group. However, that would be wrong. Modern classification schemes look beyond overall similarities and differences and group organisms based on something else, trying to simplify the complex systems we live in.